That's right, we're on another road trip, and from the looks of it, Brian is looking fresh and clean like he's camera ready. Oh, I had to come out of the shower, get the hair done right. First of all, word of advice for those of you that vlog with other friends. Make sure that they're taller than you. They don't shoot you from the underneath, so you're looking, you know, you know, you gotta get the angles, gotta go up a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, we are we going out to uh, Roberts again. As promised, we are going to shoot the 98-inch Samsung QN90A. Your thoughts, expectations, Brian? Well, I and mean, we've talked about this before, is asking or saying that we need 8K at a certain size. If these companies are pushing 4K at over 100 inches, which the Sony is and the new LG will be, what do we need? What do we need 8K for if we're doing 4K LEDs um, at that size? And then we're getting into your area of projection. So do we go projector over a certain size? For me, I think 85 inches is the sweet spot on large panels. I wonder if screen uniformity is going to start taking a hit. What do you think, Ed? Well, the Samsung have what it takes to knock out the Sony X92J. Why are you pitching it like we're doing an infomercial? <laughs> 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 He's like, Will, Samsung, QN90A, check the description below. But first, we're going to pick up a half a dozen more speakers. Uh, I guess the other four is coming later. It's supposed to be seven in total, but they only showed up with four. Typical FedEx stuff. Come on, FedEx. We need to get on the ball here. So where are you guys? Where are you guys? We're uh, celebrating tonight's uh, TV celebration because we've been waiting months for this TV. So we brought a bottle of John Mayer bourbon whiskey. So we're gonna toast to this now. In celebration. And we got Robert's, Robert's birthday Cheers. and Robert's induction and, into and Robert's Disco. Birthday. Yes, thank and you. The Cheers, everybody. Dealer Scope Hall of Fame. Dealer Scope Hall of Fame. Very cool. That's Very the big boy right there. We're going to unbox. You'll you see that in a separate video, guys. You all right over there, Robert? Yeah, you want to take I'm good. Perfect. You're Perfect. Right. Perfect. I'm good. <laughs> hey, look at this, the Three Musketeers. Hey. I saw my boys drinking tonight. <laughs> no, no, but he was like, He's like, I'm This is what I've got going on today. I'm working on two home theater speaker reviews. First being the Perlison Home Theater Setup. These are the SM5 monitor speakers, and over here, I've got their gigantic center channel speaker. The other review that I'm working on are the PSB PWM home theater speakers. These are their on-wall speakers. I did a review for the B600s, I wanna say about a month or so back, but that was with the B600s mixed with the PWM speakers. So in this upcoming video, I'm gonna be replacing everything behind my screen with the PWMs. Right now I've got the Procellas behind my screen along with the PWM3 as my center channel. I know, it's not timbre matched, but that's what I've been rocking for the past few weeks or so. I am in the process of removing this P speaker and replacing it with another PWM3. So I will have left, center, and this will be my right channel speaker there. For my side surrounds, I've got the PSB PWMs already installed to the left and right sides of my seats. The only thing that I'm gonna have to like worry about is where I'm gonna put the, the Perlison side surround speakers because I'm kind of running out of space. So, and these things are not 
these things are not small. The way that these are supposed to get mounted is kind of like up high so that they aim downwards at the listening position. I really don't want to have to drill more holes into my wall, so I might just go ahead and just put them on some speaker stands. Maybe find some speaker stands that are up a little bit higher than ear level. So I'm going to probably go that route instead of putting more holes in my walls. But as for the back speakers, these are my Bowers and Wilkins 7.4s. They're going to get replaced with these guys, the PWM1s. This is PSB's smallest wall-mounted speaker in the PWM series. I've got the largest ones across the front three sound stage, so left, center, and right. I got the medium ones, the PWM2s, as my side surrounds. And then for the little guys, these are going to be placed in the back. We install it fairly easily, and you can see as a size difference, that's the PWM1, and that is my Bowers & Wilkins CT7.4. Ideally, I would have liked to have had all PWM3s or all PWM2s in every single location, but I guess it's pretty cool that I get to try out each model and see what the differences are between the largest one, medium-sized one, and the smallest one. The cool thing about having the turn-off processor is that since there are so many channels in it, that I can actually put two different surround systems in my theater at once. So if I wanted to have the PSB speakers on one preset, I can do that since it's only seven channels. And on a second preset, I can put the, the per listen speakers, which are only five channels. Since I've got about 24 channels at my disposal, just as long as I don't take up all 24 channels, I can set different presets for different home theater speaker setups. And that comes in super handy if you've got multiple, multiple, home theater setups in your house at the same time. Unfortunately, when I'm done with the review, I'm gonna have to take the speakers off the walls, take off the bracket, fill in the little screw holes with some patch, paint over it so you don't see the holes, and then put my old speakers back on the wall. And I know this is gonna be a question that a lot of you guys always leave in the comments. No, I don't get to keep the speakers, nor do I get paid to say that I like them. So I know that's a misconception. A lot of you guys think that YouTubers get to keep everything they get sent. That's absolutely not true. Even though I get a ton of speakers in for review, they do have to go back and it's not as fun as it sounds. Sometimes it is, but not all the time, especially when something sucks. 